Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thomas Strapel, director of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung's uh, regional program here in South Caucasus. Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister of the uh, Republic of Georgia, Excellency, Mr. Minister of uh, Energy, dear Excellencies, Ambassadors, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, on behalf of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, I welcome you all to this International Energy Forum on Energy Security, Old and New Geopolitical Paradigm. It is an outstanding honor for me to deliver opening remarks together with our distinguished cooperation partner, the Economic Policy Research Center. I would also like to express my gratitude to Prime Minister of Georgia, Mr. Georgi Kvilikashvili, for accepting our invitation also as a keynote speaker. And uh, our warm welcome also to the Minister of Energy, Mr. Kacha Kalatze. Konrad Adenauer Stiftung is a German political foundation, is represented in Georgia since 2003. We are an independent, organized, closely affiliated to the ruling Christian Democratic Union Party, you know, the party of Chancellor Angela Merkel. 2012 till 2015, we have established South Caucasus Energy Forum, which served an instrument for the South Caucasus region to launch national and regional in initiatives and review energy sustainability priorities. Today, we are hosting this international conference, which will outline the current and emerging energy role of Georgia and its neighboring countries, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Turkey. But also the global energy games, as well as the role of Western countries, and provoke discussions on how the Georgian government intends to act under changed world political reality. One of the most important questions in this frame is what role does the U European Union and the Western countries can take to promote Georgia as a transit country and its advantage towards other countries? The last year shows South Caucasus is a region with diverse foreign policy, security and energy policy goals and priorities, and in, the, and in the result, countries with different speeds and degrees of determinations. In analogy to these developments, one case also assess the progress in interest of the three South Caucasus countries incorporating adjoining to the European energy community. All have different energy sector development strategies. So we hope today's conference aims to produce a set of concrete policy recommendations for action by European and regional governments on how to address the global energy contents and what role Western countries should take in this process. So it's focused to the question, what is the role of Georgia and its neighbors to contribute to Europe, Europe's energy security challenges? I would like to conclude uh, these remarks by once again thanking our partner organization, Economic Policy Research Center, and express, and express my gratitude to our guests coming from Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and United States for their active involvement and participation. I wish all a successful conference. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, now it's my great pleasure to invite Excellency uh, Mr. Georgi Kvilikashvili, Prime Minister of Republic of uh, uh, Georgia, and uh, Mr. Edward Cho, Senior Fellow of Energy and National Security Program, to take uh, the first panel. Thank you very much.
Good morning, Prime Minister. Um, it's always a pleasure to be back here in Georgia again for me, and I want to especially uh, thank the uh, Conrad and uh, Shifton, as well as the Economic uh, Policy Research Center uh, for this opportunity to come back to, to Georgia um, and to not only meet lots of old friends in the audience, but also meet new friends, uh, including the Prime Minister. I think this is the first time uh, we've met. Uh, I took a look at your background. I was always impressed by the wrong Renaissance man that, that, that many Georgians I know are, with a uh, wonderful background with studying in medicine, and then banking, and then politics, and now, of course, in charge of the government since December of, of last year. It's a great pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, I, I thought I'd start out this conversation which is a very different one for me. Usually, prime ministers interview me and then reject me. Uh, I, I don't get to interview uh, prime ministers very often. Uh, but I thought that I, I would uh, ask a broad question of where do you think um, energy and energy security in particular fits into your government's um, uh, policy agenda in terms of the economy and as well as foreign policy? Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of um, this event, Konrad Adenauer Stiftung and the EDRC, for very important, uh, to, for raising this very important issue. Uh, and I would like to welcome our guests and our friends. Um, uh, I think the energy security has become an integral part, integral part of um, national security uh, anywhere, but especially in Georgia, in this very complex region uh, with a lot of challenges outside and uh, definitely we should say that with the development of different energy routes and also with developing new technologies of exploration, will the shale oil and gas um, emerging uh, globally and also with uh, Iran opening uh, for international uh, co co communication and cooperation and with regional conflicts, with all regional conflicts, with more heavier and heavier using energy tool as a political tool by many countries. Uh, it is becoming more and more important for Georgia first of all, to diversify supply routes for energy for Georgia to satisfy the growing consumption needs of Georgia. And on the other hand, to utilize all the internal resources, renewable resources, including new sources of energy internally. So it is becoming uh, one of the most strategic parts of Georgia's economic policy, again to diversify, to develop transit routes through Georgia, and also to use internal resources, focusing on using and utilizing fully, especially hydro resources. Um, uh, and we do have ample hydro resources, according to different surveys, from 25 to 30 percent of our hydro resources are utilized. So there is a long way to go and for this of course uh, we have done important changes, institutional changes, infrastructure investments, regulatory changes. Starting from 1999 we have introduced independent regulatory institutions which was a crucial change for liberalizing uh, uh, small-scale uh, hydropower plants and on the other hand to I impose right market-oriented regulations on larger scale HPPs. Currently Georgia has around 2,700 megawatts installed capacity and more than 4,500 is under development. So this tells how important for Georgia is utilizing all the resources 
and also to be included and plugged into international projects such as Paco Tbilisi, uh, Paco Subsa, Paco Tbilisi Jehan, and gas pipelines, etc., etc., uh, and we can discuss it later. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really interesting that you mentioned the uh, development of, of domestic energy resources. Uh, I think Georgia, as you said, has done a lot over the years uh, to improve its situation. And there are many lessons learned, uh, such as on pricing reform in, in Georgia, uh, that would be applicable to your neighbors, uh, other countries in, in the region. Um, and, and I was wondering if you can um, talk a little bit more about some of the reforms or, or, or liberalization going forward to promote the renewables that you talk about, to promote more hydroelectricity, uh, as well as domestic um, uh, oil and gas production, perhaps. Uh, that uh, Because I, I think, given that this is a regional conference, uh, one thinks of, of, of some of your neighbors, including some across uh, the Black Sea uh, from you, who are struggling with those kinds of issues right now. Uh, in terms of, of uh, over-reliance on, on gas imports and, and developing more of their resources. Are there certain lessons learned from Georgia that you think would be useful uh, for the region as a whole? Thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, during the recent, uh, I would say, uh, 16, 17 years, uh, important uh, reforms have been introduced. Uh, first of all, it was, as I said, introducing independent regulators, which was a crucial starting point. Then, of course, in engaging international financial institutions. And international financial institutions uh, bring uh, important know-how and expertise and uh, prudency uh, to, to the projects, energy projects. Uh, also, uh, institutional uh, capacity building uh, of state-owned enterprises uh, such as electricity market, introducing uh, contemporary distribution principles and developing uh, uh, renewable resources. First of all, it's hydro resources and of course, in putting in place important investment institutions and mechanisms such as, for example, Georgian uh, Energy Development Fund, which is uh, state-owned fund uh, functioning under the Ministry of Energy which acts as a um, seed investor for important energy projects with very clear exit strategy in two, three years from starting the operations. Uh, also, uh, partnership fund which also acts as an important uh, sovereign investor, sovereign uh, financial investor in the energy sector, again, with very clear exit strategy. And also the cooperation with, as I said, international financial institutions. We have the IRD representative here. We have other important financial institutions, such as IFC, World Bank, bringing ex important expertise and know-how to the projects. Right now, we have uh, international consortiums, such as, for example, Indian Tata Consortium, investing in one of the largest hydropower plants. Our uh, total investment is 650 million US dollars. We have a South Korean uh, K-Water, which is a state-owned enterprise of South Korea, investing in the largest hydropower plant uh, in the post-Soviet era of Georgia, which is around $1 billion investment. So there are important uh, changes going on. But a very important thing is providing electricity uh, grid infrastructure in order to provide export opportunity for the local uh, hydropower plants and also for local gas power plants. Uh, and uh, again, uh, this is, uh, there are important projects underway right now, hundreds of millions of dollars of investments providing export opportunities to Turkish market. Although the recently the prices went slightly down, according to many international experts, medium-term uh, forecasts are very favorable in terms of increasing consumption. 
even internal consumption in Georgia, for example, in 2015, it grew by 13.9%, which is a remarkable uh, growth, uh, growth rate, which provides uh, important uh, stimulus for developing local investments, but also uh, um, very selectively we use power purchase agreements from state-owned enterprises in order to provide enough predictability uh, for the uh, investors using different mechanisms of caps and floors, options. So this is quite sophisticated structure, but I should say institutionally, legislatively, Georgia has introduced important changes and this is the reason why Georgia has become net exporter of energy. This is the biggest achievement for us. But of course we still import energy, we still import natural gas for our gas power stations, but we are working very hard to utilize local resources and to reduce the dependency of imports. This is our strategic goal. Well, it's, it's really very interesting that you talked about uh, Georgia's, of course, what we've thought of for a long time, uh, traditional role as a transit country, but you've become a demand center for energy uh, uh, growth uh, as well, uh, which is an indication, uh, it, it seems to me, of the economic success you've had over a, a, a longer period of time, although you know, we're, we're all going through a little bit of a down period right now globally, uh, that the long-term trajectory ha has been good. Um, so we've often thought of, of Georgia as a country that contributes uh, to, as a transit country, to other countries' diversification of supply and diversification of supply routes. But it sounds to me like you're also thinking about how to uh, diversify uh, Georgia's own supply mix, uh, whether it is from domestic resources or, or from uh, import resources. Uh, and, and I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how the regional dynamics play into that. Thank you. It's very important that Georgia plays important transit role in Caucasus and wider region. If, uh, several uh, weeks ago, we celebrated 20-year anniversary of uh, launching the first uh, transit project, which was Baku Subsa pipeline, the first pipeline that really put Georgia on the energy map. Uh, after that, we have uh, additional important projects like Baku PDC Jehan project. Uh, we have uh, South Caucasus uh, gas pipeline project. Uh, implemented by BP uh, and Shah Denis 2 project which puts additional gas into this pipeline and uh, this is a, a totally 45 billion US dollar project 2 billion out of which will be invested directly in Georgia uh, these are very important strategic projects this is not only energy supply for Europe this is energy security for Europe, and this is diversifying Europe's energy supply. Uh, several weeks ago, I was uh, in Greece uh, inaugurating uh, Trans Adriatic Pipeline construction, uh, which is an integral part of uh, the energy supply route from Caspian region to Europe. This is uh, exporting Caspian gas through Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey, Trans Anatolian pipeline, then Trans Adriatic pipeline to Greece, uh, Albania, and uh, south of Italy. This is a uh, multi-billion US dollar project um, reinforcing security along the route in all the countries. This is very important uh, uh, project in terms of building, uh, bringing more security in the region and of course diversifying energy supply of Europe. We see uh, in recent periods that Russia is using heavily uh, the energy tools. Um, uh, we, we see Russia-Ukraine crisis, we see um, attempts of diminishing 
uh, transit, the importance of transit goes through Ukraine uh, via announcing new projects like uh, uh, South Stream, North Stream, and of course, at this backdrop, building important energy supply routes through South Caucasus brings more stability to Europe, brings more stability to South Caucasus, and it has uh, excellent opportunity to plan, plug Turkmenistan resources into this pipeline, given the capacity of the pipeline that is being installed. It is absolutely possible with some additional investments and political will, not only from Turkmenistan, but also from Western countries. Uh, you, you just mentioned Russia, um, and, and you also earlier in your opening remarks uh, uh, mentioned the changing uh, uh, international relationship with Iran. Uh, how do you think uh, countries in the larger neighborhood, those two among others, uh, uh, play in, in Georgia's thinking about its role in the larger region? Um, are, are those countries uh, welcome to do business in, in, in Georgia? Uh, are they, uh, and, and how do you achieve a balance of interests uh, uh, with uh, other of your partners like Azerbaijan? Well, uh, first of all, uh, strategy for Georgia is uh, getting closer to the West, to European Union, to the Euro-Atlantic community, uh, signing agreement, uh, joining uh, energy community, uh, European energy community, and uh, of course uh, diversifying energy uh, supply routes. But Azerbaijan for us is really number one strategic partner in supplying energy and gas, natural gas to Georgia. Natural gas supply remains very important for our energy balance and uh, more than 90% of Georgia's uh, demand is uh, being satisfied by Azerbaijan. Uh, through uh, several pipelines, but again, expansion of South uh, Caucasus gas pipeline project provides additional opportunities for Georgia. Uh, through providing additional 500 million cubic meters starting from 2018 and we have a strategic agreement with Azerbaijan until 2030 on, on the energy supply. So this is our primary principal partner in energy supply. But generally uh, we are becoming part of European energy system uh, and of course uh, all the rules of uh, uh, providing stable energy supply to Europe, uh, providing, uh, uh, actually applying uh, transit rules for energy resources uh, will be um, part of Georgia's regulation and institutional rules. Uh, this autumn we are planning to join energy community uh, and after signing association agreements additional regulations will apply to the energy supply, uh, and Georgia will become integral part, integral part of Europe's energy supply. As you are aware, uh, all EU countries, in, uh, and additionally eight uh, countries, are part of energy community. So it is important to join this family for us. And of course, uh, uh, the systems and uh, legislation and institutions will become even more legible and predictable for international investors. Um, I, I think uh, I am maybe one other uh, are the only two people from the United States uh, uh, at, at this conference uh, and it would be remiss uh, of me not to ask you a question about what supportive role you see the United States playing uh, in terms of your energy situation as well as promoting uh, uh, energy cooperation in, in the wider region. Thank you. Uh, uh, of course, uh, US and Georgia are very important strategic partners for us. United States uh, has been, and I would say, existentially important partner during all these 25 years of uh, restoring 
uh, since restoring Georgia's independence. And uh, 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 launching of important projects such as uh, Baku Supsa, Baku Tbilisi Jehan, and uh, Baku Erzurum uh, uh, gas pipeline, and uh, uh, also currently existing uh, projects that are underway are, of course, uh, with a very important um, contribution from the United States. The United States is an important player regionally, and of course, uh, uh, the challenges that this region has, frozen conflicts, um, terrorism threats, uh, cannot be mitigated without very important involvement and contribution from the United States. We have excellent cooperation, we have excellent um, uh, anti-terrorism cooperation, security cooperation. Right now, uh, uh, our defense minister is in the United States. I have very important visit uh, about two months ago, and we discussed uh, expanding uh, uh, the formats of our security and military cooperation, which will be a very important source of stability in this region. And of course, uh, uh, important economic projects. And uh, we hope very much that U.S. will be engaged in the new opportunities, in exploring the opportunities uh, with opening up of Iran for international cooperation. And again, in this cooperation, we stay in very close touch with the United States as an important part for us. How, how do you see the evolving relationship uh, that the, the global community uh, will have with Iran and, and, and what role might Georgia play in that? Well, I think uh, it can be very interesting for Europe and um, we are really uh, watching closely this development. Uh, we have been neighbors during uh, centuries. We have uh, important uh, commerce cooperation right now and more and more Iranian companies are interested to use Georgia as a hub for logistics and manufacturing, utilizing uh, the potential of free trade agreement which was signed recently between European Union and Georgia. So I think that Georgia can be an important base for Western companies in order to expand further to, towards East, including utilizing uh, opportunities of cooperation with Iran, and also for Iranian companies using Georgia as an exit point for, towards Europe, uh, providing excellent uh, doing business characteristics of Georgia's economic framework providing excellent geographic location, very liberal economic framework, uh, relatively cheap local energy resources, educated labor, relatively lower cost. I think Georgia can be an excellent trade and logistics hub for Europe, linking Europe and Asia. Uh, and we need to mention also uh, Silk Road. Uh, we are expanding our uh, discussion now more towards uh, trade and logistics, but this is also an important uh, component of building regional security. And I think uh, exploring all the opportunities given by uh, reconstruction of the Silk Road economic belt, Georgia plays as an important role again linking Europe and Asia. And uh, there can be uh, vast opportunities, not only energy supply, I think uh, uh, data, uh, digital, uh, Silk Road, Silk Road. Uh, we all already uh, opened opportunities for uh, railroad shipments from China to Europe and it takes only eight days to reach from China to Georgia. Uh, so in, in two weeks it can be, uh, the goods can be delivered to the heart of Europe, to Germany, to the Danube uh, River. So there are a number of opportunities, but there are challenges. And these are regional security challenges. Frozen conflicts, uh, ISIL, uh, 
um, again, instability in Syria, which is uh, far and at the same time uh, in the proximity from, from this region. And we need to mitigate all these risks in order to become a real transit and energy transit and logistics hub. And this cannot be done without uh, reinforcing important security uh, uh, in South Caucasus and especially in Georgia. Uh, Georgia proved that it is a stable partner for the West and of course strategic goal for us is to join NATO and we see it as the only security mechanism to provide enough stability in the region for all these very important projects that we have just listed. That's really very interesting um, that you mentioned the, the challenges and, and, and not just the opportunities that are involved and it shows that Georgia is always taking a, a pre pragmatic approach to what can be done. Uh, you, you mentioned the Silk Road and you mentioned China's One Belt, One Road uh, uh, policy. Are there specific economic projects that uh, you think would be most prospective and uh, you mentioned rail, you mentioned uh, 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 digital Silk Road. Are there specific projects uh, that you have in mind that would be useful to advance? Uh, yes, of course, there are a number of very important strategic projects. I would mention several of them. Um, first, it's a deep sea port construction, uh, which is called Anaglia Port. In Anaglia Port, can be a model for Georgia's function in the nearest decades. We already have a winner consortium for investment in Anaglia Airport, and this is US Georgian consortium. We have New Jersey based uh, engineering company Conti Group partnering with one of the largest uh, uh, holdings, TBC Group which can be excellent base for cooperation between East and West, and they are now looking for port operator from China. So this project can be a model of cooperation between the West and East, where Georgia plays its important role. This is a multi-billion US dollar investment, increasing Georgia's transit capacity uh, several times, and in three years from now, from now Georgia's container transit capacity will double. And Georgia is already running almost uh, at the full capacity of shipping uh, containers. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, important south-east-west highway project where we already have uh, main contractors, uh, the Chinese companies. And of course, uh, important cooperation between Azerbaijan Georgia and Turkey are building new railroad, which is Bakut Milisi Cars Railway, which is an integral part of the uh, One Belt, One Road initiative, since it links Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey, and via Marmaray, Europe. So all these projects, and including internal modernization of Georgia's railway, are creating new capacities to ship goods from Asia to Europe and vice versa, and more importantly, to create value-added production and manufacturing facilities in Georgia. Thank you very much, and thank you for responding so generously to relatively uninformed questions from a visitor from far away. We, we have a much better informed audience here, and I think it, it may be time to open up the question and answer period uh, to the audience. I believe they're probably microphones, uh, so please raise your hand and uh, a mic will come to you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kirill Kandelaki. I'm an MP with the UNM. Uh, here in Georgia, uh, Prime Minister, you presented a very optimistic picture. Uh, yet, the amount of invest investment in energy in 2014 fell by 22% as opposed to the previous year and in 2015 uh, the fall continued with 53%.
how would you explain that? Also, could you update the audience where you stand with uh, Gazprom and your efforts to bring that company to Georgia? Shale gas, nuclear, or uh, uh, other energy sources face a lot of uh, efforts by the Russian Federation in different parts of Europe of discreditation. And one way in which Russian Federation tries to discredit these uh, sources is obviously through uh, their uh, propaganda channels uh, in Germany or wherever. Well, there has been credible research in Georgia that some of these Russian propaganda channels uh, outlets are funded by uh, the uh, government. You said in your No Nation speech in Parliament in December that if confirmed, this funding would stop. The Council of Europe, its Commission Against Racism and Intolerance, which monitors hate speech, has now confirmed that indeed the Georgian government is funding such outlets. Now that it, it is confirmed, is this funding of Russian propaganda channels going to stop? Yes or no? Thank you. I, I knew there would be tougher questions from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, uh, energy investments take an uh, important period of structuring the projects. And of course, uh, structuring projects like Nesca, for example, which is a one billion US dollar investment, took almost one and a half year. And this is a natural period of launching and uh, negotiations and originating the deal. I know I will not go into all the details of all this period. And now the project is already implement, being implemented. And also the uh, Tata Consortium, which took an uh, important time. Uh, and by the way, uh, in 2012, this project was abandoned by, uh, by Data Consortium and it took a lot of effort uh, to bring uh, the investor back. And uh, uh, all the IFIs, of course, and they have internal procedures to invest in the project, to prepare the investment. And of course, this is uh, uh, due diligence and uh, all the necessary steps that, to be, are to be, that are to be taken in order to come to a point to start the real investment. And of course the reason also for decreasing uh, FDI, physical FDI, was falling uh, of uh, oil prices and uh, generally energy prices uh, due to the regional conflicts between uh, Ukraine and Russia. And now we have tensions between uh, Turkey and Russia which of course uh, affects uh, the general outlook in the region and we are not isolated from this, uh, from this outlook. Uh, but I should say that these important projects that are being listed now and that I already listed are underway. There is no suspension or hold to the BP investment in South Caucasus pipeline. They are continuing at full swing so there is no reason for any skepticism. Uh, on uh, Gazprom, we had technical negotiations to uh, fill the gap of our energy demand, which was increased by almost 14% in last year. And we had, uh, uh, we had discussions with Gazprom, and uh, we finished these discussions with additional agreement with SOCA on additional energy supply, supply through uh, BP pipeline, which was important deal and also providing more favorable terms for Georgia's uh, energy supply. Russia accounts for uh, less than 10% of Georgia's energy uh, energy supply, and uh, I wish we can uh, say that we are not heavily dependent on Russia's supply as it was in the past. So unfortunately, I need to use this word that all this uh, row out of nothing was a pure political speculation that Georgia turns uh, to uh, Gazprom back. Uh, and this is not the case. And uh, we are 
staying in very important strategic partnership with Azerbaijan on Georgia's energy supply. On Russian propaganda, yes, uh, of course, this is important challenge, especially in the regions of Georgia we face increased Russian propaganda. But I should say that despite all that and with a very efficient counter propaganda managed by Ministry of uh, European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, we managed to maintain one of the highest supports for European aspirations and Euro-Atlantic aspirations. According to recent surveys, uh, 80, more than 80% of uh, Georgia's population favors European aspirations and more than 75% Euro-Atlantic aspirations. This is uh, much higher than in many countries of Eastern Europe who are members of NATO or even aspirant countries uh, who are under the membership action plan with NATO. So uh, there is no reason for any skepticism about uh, Georgia's possible um, uh, dependency on Russian energy supply. I will not go to uh, some aspects of uh, discussing uh, uh, Russian investments to Georgia's energy sector, which was mainly done during the previous administration before Georgia Dream came to power. So let's not discuss it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. More questions? John. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, indeed, uh, we are aiming at joining energy community uh, and, of course, there will be transitional period until all the regulations of energy community apply. This is a uh, several year period, but in order to satisfy maybe the, in detail the interests of our audience, I may ask uh, Deputy Minister of Energy, uh, Mr. Ms. Uh, uh, Mariam Walishwili, who is here uh, to answer completely this question, because this is a very technical issue, uh, I will ask Mariam, who is immediately personally involved in these negotiations. Thank you very much. This is really very uh, outstanding effort that Georgia will be making very shortly. I would like to inform the audience that uh, we formally finalized the negotiation. So two weeks ago we had the very last round of the negotiations and now we move to the stage when the formal procedures from our side and from the uh, European Commission side is in progress. And we believe that the family of energy community will be accepting Georgia as a full-fledged member uh, in October ministerial. Uh, as for the timelines, as you have um, uh, heard many times, we have a very exceptional uh, negotiated framework with the energy community, primarily with the transit and the cross-border trade. We have the derogations, which ultimately gives us the possibility of uh, the freedom to negotiate the new transit arrangements through Georgia. Uh, on the other hand, we are completely in a position to apply the internal market regulations, which increases the competitiveness on the market, at the same time increase the quality of service, and basically it helps us to be more secured within the regulation which is applicable to EU states. So I believe that this is environment, energy efficiency and renewable promotion. This is the quite complex um, reform agenda ahead of Georgia and we are in full readiness actually to uh, go ahead with the implementation within the next three, four years, the round of the new reform will be finalized. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, ma Madam uh, Deputy Minister. It, it's really quite interesting and, and, and important, I think, uh, to emphasize in these to have it emphasized in these negotiations Georgia's special transit rules, because otherwise it will be somewhat to Georgia's disadvantage if the full transit rules are applied. Um, uh, 
Uh, more questions from the audience. Apparently, you answered everyone's questions, which is quite remarkable for, for, for a prime minister with the broad range of uh, responsibilities that you have, uh, not only in energy, of course, but, but, but in other matters. Um, are, are there other things on your mind? Uh, I, I heard a lot since I arrived here yesterday about uh, where we stand with the EU and Georgia as a visa-free regime for travel. I, I'm personally rather interested in it so that my, my flights from Europe to Georgia don't leave in the middle of the night and arrive in the early morning uh, with hopefully additional traffic. Uh, the, the flights would leave uh, Europe in the afternoon. I can arrive uh, 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 at a proper time in the evening for a proper Georgian dinner uh, before going to bed. So, uh, where do we stand on that? Thank you very much. Indeed, uh, this is the hottest issue in Georgia right now. And we have EU Ambassador, Mr. Jano Sherman, who is really, by the way, very supportive. I'd like to take opportunity to thank you uh, Mr. Ambassador, for your great support, and uh, Georgia has fulfilled its um, assignment. We have uh, completed all the technical parts of visa liberalization action plan. We are absolutely in line with all the requirements set by European Commission, and accordingly the positive report from European Commission has been issued in uh, December of the last year. Now we are in the process of uh, consolidating support among the member states because as you are aware, we need consensus in the Council of uh, European Commission and then of course European Parliament should approve this decision. We are very hopeful. Uh, I would uh, refrain from going into details of our discussions and uh, uh, conversations with European leaders. But of course, we understand the challenges that Europe faces, the migrant crisis, the inflow of um, uh, migrants, referendums in, uh, uh, that was held in uh, Netherlands, uh, upcoming referendum in United Kingdom, and of course, these are issues that we understand as part of European family, and we are part of European family historically. We have been part of European culture, and of course, this is uh, the final destination for us. We know it will take time. We know it will take a lot of patience and uh, very strong commitment uh, among all members of our society, from all members of our society. But we will be very consistent, despite all these challenges, despite uh, all the sensitivities of this issue. We believe that until the end of this year, hopefully until the elections, since this issue is very important for generating even more support among pro-Western political forces, uh, we, we hope that it will be completed by the 8th of October with, when we have parliamentary elections. But it's up to member states now to make decisions. Georgia has completed its, its uh, own part. Now, uh, now it's up to European countries to make decisions. It's not, it's not easy and we understand uh, moods and challenges, but you know, all these issues like migration crisis, internal challenges, um, has nothing to do with Georgia's technical readiness for, for this issue. And we are ready institutionally, legislatively, we are ready for this. Uh, you mentioned several times, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, Georgia in, in terms of uh, not only the government, but the population's commitment to, to have a Western orientation, the Western direction uh, as, as strategic uh, for, for your country. Uh, 
Do you have any concerns in that area? In not, not going beyond the visa uh, question there. Um, uh, are there things that is happening uh, in your immediate neighborhood or the wider region that might derail uh, this, this um, uh, commitment on the part of the uh, desire, uh, commitment on the part of Georgia? Uh, are there things that are on your mind that, that we can, uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the, the uh, Russia's role in, in, in Ukraine uh, right now, for example. Are there things going on uh, that might complicate uh, the situation for Georgia? And, and how might some of these challenges you mentioned, including frozen conflicts, be resolved so that uh, the Georgia's orientation towards the West uh, is not also at the same time seen as a threat by some? Um, can, can you uh, talk a little bit about that, please? Well, indeed, uh, there are challenges like um, occupation of Georgia's historic two territories, which is Abkhazia and Srinwali region, which is called South Ossetia. And of course, um, there are severe um, security and humanitarian issues. There is military buildup on all both of these territories, and uh, there is severe violations of basic human rights uh, across the occupation line and also in Abkhazia and in South Ossetia, uh, problems with ethnic Georgians, like depriving them of right of uh, education, Georgian language ed education, depriving property rights, uh, across the occupation line, and yesterday we had installing new signs of uh, borders, so-called borders, and this borderization process is going on, and we have ethnic Georgians from time to time captured by uh, uh, occupation forces, kept in prisons, uh, claiming for bailout. But uh, nothing can change Georgia's destiny. And Georgia's destiny is determined by people of Georgia. And it was never a um, sovereign mood of Georgian people so strong as it is today. And despite all these challenges, the sense of and spirit of consolidation around these very important strategic goals is very strong in Georgia. So I don't see any major threat for Georgia's Western aspirations. Nothing can derail us from this strategic route. Given, again, uh, important reforms, um, given democratization of Georgia, building institutional democracy, improving democracy standards in Georgia, which is, by the way, uh, confirmed by reputable international institutions. World governance indicators from the World Bank last year uh, issued a report on dramatic improvement in Georgia in freedom of expression, absence of violence, stability, uh, regulatory quality, etc., etc. So these are very important achievements and these achievements determine the future of Georgia, not the challenges that we have. So this is important to improve, to create democracy in this country and to taste this democracy and to vaccinate ourselves against uh, negative dark sides of the past. This is what makes Georgia truly European and this is what uh, creates European destiny of Georgia. Well, that's most encouraging. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, unless there are other urgent questions for the audience, uh, I propose that I turn the time back to the organizers. But before that, please join me in thanking the Prime Minister for his opening. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you, Edward, for this uh, very interesting uh, conversation. And now it's a pleasure for me to uh, invite uh, Mr. Kacha Kalatze, Minister for Energy and uh, Vice Prime Minister uh, of the Republic of Georgia, bring out his uh, welcome speech. Atono Premier Ministro, Kolege Bo, Svirfaso Stumbre Bo, Abatone Bo, Dabatone Bo, Esme Rogoc, Energetikis Minist, Smaug Spativi, Vive Salmo, Čujem Spatice Mu Stumbre, Stak i Devertel, Fazi Gao Svojim Pakcrom, Agnis Nuli, Konferencija, Ki Devert, Šestanis Novi Sašo Leba i Misarom, Ševi Mušavot, Ertoglivi Midgoma, Region Šiar Sabuli, Energetik Uligano Zojevi Sadmi, Da Efekti Anad, Ova Hinot, Reagireba, Indinare, Ole Nebze. Ape Neba Momecit, Visar Geblo, Šemtkovita, Gamo Hato, Čemi Zrma, Pati Viscema, Amri Sesanič Navi, Gonis Diebis, Iniciatore Visada, Organizatore Vismima. Švet Alze Mohar Unu Vartrom, Soret, Tbilisi, Marteba, Agnes Nuli Konferencija, Da Imet Skamut Pond, Rom, Eš Šesanič Navi Tradicija, Samo nolo da zgak zeldeba. Adip se mu lomo na cilevo. Sanam si pa zgadab sem, čujem s glevan delu. Mok se ne bleb sem sus, visar ga bo še en kovita, hazi ga v svojim paksrom. Raudem nič nolovanja energetikuli v srt kojobis, uzrumel opa, tite uli kvepnispis. Rogor Cnobilija, sajrta še vrso energetikuli baz rebi, bolo zlepšim nič nolovan s vlebe v zganestija. Min dinare globalizacijis procese batam, Ahalma, geopolitikul ma zestigma, mišmelovani zegavljena i konja regionši, energetikuli politikis, ahali mi martu lebebis formirebaš. Sasica odsklo da luci lebeli ga htam, energodiversifikacijis, ahali gzebisada šažvalebis odzijeba. Kaspi izgui sa uši, idi moculobis na autobis da bune brevi ajris. Rezervebis ahmočeni šemdek, šavizmis regions, dan sa kofrebuli mišmeloba mijeniča. Energo magare vrebze pasebis u ganas knez periodis. Konikturam kide u prom in zidoeli da mongevijani gasada Kaspijis energo resursebis soplio bazrebisken transportireba samhred Kaukasijis gaugut. Amas tanave, agnič nuli regioni sudides roz tamašom som soplios energetikuli bazrebis ganitarebis proces. Carmo atges rahto atosavletis realu Alternativu gzazda je trti hvelase, hvelsa hvel, energo, minco debel partijos, Evroatlantikuri, aliansi skvrtne visatis. Patrik se mulo kolege, rogor super, a uničnet Kaspijis, regioni skvrtnevs, idi odenovit energo resurse bis maragi gaančne. Magram, pevri mazgani, a uničnet resurse bis im sopio energetikul bazram del usapto transportire bis problemis cinašet gaz. Agnis Nuli, procese bi zgatvali si ne biti, ene bo sa tranzito pevne bi skandatan zak nišnjo loba si zemlji. Sakartelo s rogorca je trčo bi so nišnjo lobi sa tranzito funkciji sun kone pevne nas, da sa ime do patni ors nišnjo loba ni spriliš i avks moc zemlju procese bi. Amis nateli da da stove ba, skoa u PR se bulic armate v prisa je trčo bi so projekte v tanertat, čveni pevni s akti uri, čartu loba sam hred energetikuli derekus, gani tare bi s procesi, nobi smešo je obitac, Kaspijs regioni, ide v prodavu ahlovdeba Evropis energetikul bazirus. Asevi Aksaničnavija samfred kao kasi uri gasa denis ga partovebis projekt. Euroazibuli navtopis sa transporto deretis projekt. Asevi Hasgasa Smelija sakartolos čartuloba transkaspi uri milca denis ga anforcilebis mizit čekni samušao čupis sakmijano baš. Romlis sa bolovo mizani soret izolvi reguli. Centraluri Aziz sa hemci pojebitan muafinos bunebrivi resursebis transportireba Evropis regioniski. Energo ustav tkoj obi samosa ne bidan gamon dinarem, eba momeci tavniš norom gazar dili teroristuli sabtke ebis gamon infrastrukturui saime do oba stanertat, arang nagleb nišno oba svaničet resursebis ustav tkoj obas. Am mizni terter tim, respektiv ulmi martu leba sakmo odgens gathewa de buli bunebrivi ajris gamon keneba. Čuen kvernis čartu loba Agri projekči Romelis Gulis Mops. Kad heva de buli, tu ne brevi ajris transportire bas Evropaši, a mis carmo de buli da nateli magalitija. 
Ако не бам момент сит хази гаусвам, чуе ни стратегија или партнери бис акти урм харта чија сада дахмари бас ромлис ше дегада сакателом ше зло ишмелувани роли е тамаша региони се не бидат кули политики форми форми ребаши. А тоа на премиер министр Мазалиан слади са убра урам денат ишмелувани а ави бисот бис ресурсе би ромлис чуе ни кога нас гаачнија така гаачу не трон чуе ни таур ба хели суплеба вода бер сакате бисром е ресурсе би раче изле базалиан срапат. تا رقصیونال دورات یک نیست، آتی سر بولی دا گام کنن بولی چه نیکرده ساکت ایل زود. که دارشونه بولی وقتی ماشین روم ساکت ایلو و خود اسم موارشی می آفرشد دا گفته با الکترون انرژی استفاده از رسید دامو کی دبلی به کنن. میتی چه نیکرده ساکت ایلو ساکت ایلو شی تار بود بولی الکترون انرژی است کاتان است ترکه چی تا ترکه تیز گاولی تشه ساز دبلی یک نبا اروپا بود کرد نشی. میمی داشته و ویسا بگوش ام خویت زالیان دیتی مادل با داد و خدم. Ես մեկոբար արդնի որ կվեպնեպս, ամերիկի շերտեպ ուստատեպս, ես տրատեկլ մեկոբար արդնի որ կվեխանաս, իմ դախմար է միստվիս հած ոտցիցլիս գանմալովաշի մատ դանախործի էլ ես սակարտոլուշի դամ էներգետիկիս մի Բոլո սամիցլիս գանմալովաշի ծալիան բևրին նիշնոլովանի պրոյկտիք նա գանխործի էլ է բուլի սակարտոլոս էներգետիկաշի։ Ես հատպան ու դախել շել ուծխով սկվեղնիս էներգետիկուլ գանիտարևաս, էներգետիկուլ գրադովա� Ախալի ոտոբլիվի պրոյկտեպիս գանխործի էլ ուսա հած հավիս մուխրիվ կելշի ուծխով սրեգիոնշի ստաբիլ ուրիտան ծարմակեք ուլիմ տանամշոն լոպիս չամոխալի մուպասվանց։ Uh, body energy, uh, it's a coffee break and uh, I would say uh, we meet us here in the hall um, 11.30 approximately. Thank you very much for us.